Christians in Motion. This is one of those verses that I feel gets taken straight, straight, straight out of context sometimes, you know? What now? But when they call themselves a Christian page and they're posting things that completely go against the Bible, that's where I take it. That's not what that verse is saying at all. Hey there and hello. Welcome to the Christian's Motion Podcast. My name is Kristen. Thank you for tuning in and stopping by. Glad that you are here. All right, so if you follow us on Patreon, which you probably don't because we only have two patrons, you should support us on Patreon, by the way. Patreon.com slash Christian's Emotion, hashtag ad. Um, <laughs> then you would know, if you were a patron, that there are some changes coming to the Christian's Emotion podcast and our page. And uh, one of those changes is that we have added an admin. And that admin is joining me here tonight. So uh, say hi, John Watson. Hello, Christian's Emotion world. How's everything going? No one can talk back. Except me, because this is pre-recorded. Dang it. (laughs) Dang it. Start it over. All right. Take two. (laughs) Whenever I have someone else on the podcast, I feel the need to, like, rush through the intro, because I hate the idea of you just sitting there waiting. Just waiting to talk. So I rush through those intros. Yeah, there's always a meme in my head, like, with the the, the one with the guy that's got the, the kid that's sitting there and he's clenched he's got the bulging <laughs> vein in his head he's like sitting here waiting <laughs> waiting <laughs> for anyway, my turn to talk yeah 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 it's I, I, it's been three minutes without me uh talking so yeah it's you're getting all fun. twitchy <laughs> triggered <laughs> yes um okay so the deal is um for for everybody else that isn't a patron basically um as our page is getting bigger There's just more stuff for me to do than I can handle, and uh, John Watson seemed interested in joining the page, and I asked him, and he's joining, and um, that's that's the story of that. (laughs) Not too exciting, right? Yeah, I'm pretty... People think that I'm funny, and I'm funny on Facebook, but really at home, I'm a pretty boring guy. Like, I like, you know, I have fun and goof off, but uh, I'm, I'm not as funny in person as you would think and pe- that people like freak out that's there's no way i'm not believing that but <laughs> but yeah at home i'm pretty low-key and like not funny at all. i mean i still like to have fun but but uh 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 facebook's kind of a world where you can do do what you want and say what you want to an extent i guess so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah but yeah no, i know i i uh, i uh i still like to have the fun though all the funds the need, funds, need to have the funds. The funds. Yes. Um, so people might remember you from a podcast, what was that, like a month ago? Uh, we talked about the deity of Christ. The deity of Christ. There we go. Um, the deity of Christ? D- what are we, D- WWE? <laughs> <laughs> the yes. DDT of Christ! <laughs> yes. Um, so basically, you're going to be on the page full time. Um, basically everything that I do, John's going to be doing too. He's going to be posting on Facebook. Mm. He's going to be doing blogs. He's going to be doing podcasts. Sometimes he's going to be podcasting by himself. Sometimes it's going to be us together. So like I said, everything that I do, he's doing too. He's basically like, like I said, everything I do, I'm kind of cutting it in half and giving that to John, which is fantastic. (laughs) It's like a way off. We're like the A team. We're like the A team, (laughs) but there's only two of us. So it's like. I guess I could be B.A. Baracus and you could be, you could be Face or I don't know, any of the other, Murdoch maybe. So yeah. I don't know, Murdoch was a little crazy, but anyways. I don't know if everyone's going to get that reference, John. <laughs> yeah, I'm super old. I forget, 18 was like eight, a show from 1812. So it's an old, old cheesy action show for you younger guys, you, you millennial and post-millennial guys. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I'm I'm a little older than than I uh, realize that I am. Sometimes I have to stop and think about it. But anyways, it's all good. All right, so <laughs> I I want people to get to know you because they they already know me because I've been sitting here blabbing for the past you know two years <laughs> since this right. page has been up. So people they they know me by now. So they they need to get to know you. 
So what we have done, we're going to keep this episode really low key. This is going to, if you're looking for like edifying theology, we got nothing for you this week. <laughs> um, oh boy. <laughs> nothing. This is going to be total shenanigans. So yeah, if you're, if you're looking for something edifying, um, sorry, <laughs> not, nice. this, not this week. Uh, listen to the deity of Christ episode. That's more edifying. Uh, this is gonna yeah. Be- if you want to, if you want to get to know me for real, like go listen to Deity of Christ first. <laughs> this is gonna be total, total tomfoolery. It's gonna be splendid. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I have composed a list of twenty questions. We're gonna play twenty questions. Um, John has not seen these. Um, so this is going to be totally off the cuff, which this should be fun. Some of these are somewhat like related to Christianity. Some of them are not. So are are you ready to rock and roll? Let's do it. All right. Question one. I'm going to start you with an easy one. What is your favorite Christian podcast ever? There's only one right answer to this. Uh, it's got to be Christians in motion. What a good answer. Oh my gosh. We're like so alike. Okay, in all seriousness, other than Christian's Emotion, what are some of your favorite Christian podcasts? Um, do they have to be do they have to be theological or can they be any in general, in other words? I mean any podcast. What are some of your favorites? Okay. Uh I'm a big fan of Apologia Radio with Jeff yes. Durbin. Yes. Some of you guys know recognize them. Yes. Uh uh, I listen to the uh, Heidelcast, which is a more technical, theological, uh, uh, more reformed style. That is a guy named uh, R. Scott Clark. Okay. He's, a, uh, he's from Westminster Seminary in California. Uh, I listen to a podcast called uh, Reformed and Reloaded. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a podcast about uh, uh, guys who love theology, and they talk about guns. So oh, that's gosh. pretty cool. If if you're interested into that sort of thing, uh, I listen to Cross Politics. Yes, like which that is one. A, yeah, it's like it's like a, a, a Christian worldview <laughs> politics. Uh, and believe it or not, I like Daily Wire. I'm a big Ben Shapiro fan. Yes, really like Shapiro. Listen to him pretty regularly. So that yeah, there's a lot of different styles of you know podcasts I like. Oh, you forgot people. our favorite, John. Theocast. How could you not mention Theocast? Uh, I was waiting for you to guys. say that. Bernie, Bernie Wojcik, if you're listening to this, I apologize <laughs> for leaving, leaving out Theocast. I really apologize. I love Theocast. They're great. <laughs> yeah, Theocast is, is uh, they're good. Uh, there was another one that I liked, but but my mind just went blank that I don't listen to. Oh, uh, Do- Doctrine and Devotion with uh, Jimmy Fowler and Joe Thorne. Yeah, they're Reformed Baptist guys. They're super hilarious. Like, yeah. if you like shenanigans and theology, you have got to listen to Doctrine and Devotion. I'll have to check that out because I I like shenanigans. They're 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 super sarcastic, but then they all tie it back to the, to the scriptures. Really great, really great. That's awesome. All right, so question number two: What is your favorite translation of the Bible? I, I, here, I would say in the last, uh, two to three years, I've become a big fan of the, the English Standard Version, okay. the ESV. Mm-hmm. Uh, I grew up reading the New King James. Mm-hmm. I still really like the New King James. Mm-hmm. And I'll read the, um, the NASB. I know a lot of people like the NASB because it has a lot of the, uh, the modern, uh, the more textual uh, variants and all of the uh, critical texts, mm-hmm. but ESV and NS- the NASB are probably the two that I use the most. Yeah, yeah, I I like my NASB. That's that's my go-to, especially like when I'm at home reading my Bible. That's what I tend to gravitate towards. But I do have I have a really small. It's like a, a leather-bound, thin-line ESV. It's really small, really compact. That's what I usually travel with. So if I'm going to church or I'm going to a Bible study, I take that one with me. Yeah, that's that's more like I think the ESV is a really good reader's version. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think NASB is a really good study version. Yeah. Like if you're doing word studies and stuff and you don't know, you can't speak Greek or Hebrew, mm-hmm. I would I would probably use the NASB mostly. 
I think it was um, our friend Carlton, who has been on this podcast before. I think he was the one who said that the ESV is actually really good for kids. I think that was Carlton. Maybe not. I don't know. But someone said that the ESV is a good good Bible to read to kids. Shout out to Carlton Roach. Love the roaches. I swear I mention Carlton like every single episode, but he loves it, though, because he loves attention. <laughs> If only I could get him to stop drinking Folgers coffee. You hear, me? you hear this, Carlton? You have got to get some Maxwell House, bro. Carlton, I do not support this message. I like Folgers. Ah, oh, blasphemy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Well, okay, on a related note, that, that's a good segue into question three. John, super salad. What's that? Soup or salad? Pretty straightforward. Oh, I thought you said super salad. I'm like, yeah, I'm super. <laughs> like, what's a what's a super? Like, if I put my cape on my salad, <laughs> super salad. Yeah, soup or salad? That's a really tough question. I'm a huge, I'm a huge fan of of like like Asian noodle bowls. Uh, so I would probably go soup. I eat a lot. Of, like my pantry is usually slapped full of soup. Yeah. Like Campbell's chunky soup. French onion, yeah, I, I eat a lot of soup, especially Dude, in cold weather. Your accent, which is only like <laughs> cold weather down here is like three days out of the year. It's cold for three days, and then it's like blazing hot for the rest of the year. <laughs> your accent is killing me. I just hope you know that. <laughs> yeah, I kind of figure your your audience uh, it's gonna it's gonna take them some time to get used to the accent <laughs> on the podcast. Got Campbell's chunk of soup. Campbell's soup. <laughs> oh, my oh my gosh, gosh I'm dying That's over funny. here. I'm telling you, yeah. though, a a cream based soup is my weakness. Like those like thick chowders. Oh my gosh, that's the reason I'm fat. Well, <laughs> you being from you being from Pennsylvania, I figured that the the more chowder style would probably be uh, up your alley. I, I'm a oh. gumbo kind of guy. Ooh, I do uh, like being gumbo, from the though. south. Yeah. I, I like a good gumbo. Yeah. But, yeah, I like all the soups. Yeah. Well, see, listen, it's cold up here like nine months out of the year. Yeah. So we need those thick, hearty soups to keep us warm. Yeah, Pennsylvania weather is Mississippi, but completely different. <laughs> Inverted. <laughs> it's it, Yeah, you flip it around. We, we hardly ever get snow. If we get four inches of snow... Everybody goes and buys milk and bread and shut the town down. Like, nobody's <laughs> going to work. But, you know, I know you guys, it's like four inches, man. I can walk in a blizzard like that, you know? So, whatever. Yes. It's just really right. funny. You ready right. for number four? This is a good Let's one. Go. This, this is sure. my favorite one. <laughs> oh, boy. Would you rather have Donald Trump or Carl Lentz as your pastor? Oh, <laughs> man, wow. Uh, you caught me off guard with that one. Uh, you got to answer. That's the rules. I will answer. Okay. Is, do, is it, is it, that's a good question. You've really <laughs> caught me off guard with that one. I guess, I guess as crazy as it sounds, I would have to go with Donald Trump just because I don't think that I don't think that he is as dangerous theologically maybe. I know that sounds oh, weird, but like Okay. With Lent, I think with Lentz you you get the whole like you get the whole prosperity gospel spill. Yes. But I think Trump's just into like this moralistic deistic kind of yeah. Christian nationalism sort which is junk too don't get me wrong i'm not i'm not uh saying that that the guy doesn't says everything right but yeah 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 but yeah if i had to pick based on that question i i'd probably go with donald j trump because he's huge <laughs> but uh you know carl Lentz, he wears those big funny creepy glasses and um so yeah uh, uh definitely Definitely got can't. I, you know, I want to like Carl. I wanted to like Carl Lentz. I used to make fun of him because of skinny jeans. But when he did the whole the whole uh, thing on the View, oh, that, yeah, that, that just, killed it. That killed oh, it for me. Man. I yeah, kind of like 
let that guy oh. slide. I was like, you know what, whatever. You're the celebrity pastor. I don't care. Do do your thing, honey. But yeah, when he was on the View and the whole abortion thing came up, like, Mm-mm, nope, nope, done with you, nah. son. <laughs> yeah, you're. It's over with. Which yeah. I've never been a fan of, of prosperity gospel anyway. But but uh, yeah, it's no gospel it's, at all. Yeah, no, it's not. Absolutely not. Yeah, gotta go. With the, gotta go with the Trumpinator. Gotta go with Trump. I'm not gonna answer that yeah. question. I'm, I mean, I'm not playing <laughs> this game. You don't have to. This is yeah. <laughs> That's the beauty. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. Okay, number five. This is an easier one. Okay. Would, would you rather wash dishes or do laundry? Oh. See, I'm weird. I'm, I like folding laundry. I think it's relaxing. I'm getting visions of my wife laughing at me in my head about this. <laughs> uh, I hate both with a passion, <laughs> but if I had to pick one, it would be dishes. I hate doing laundry. I despise. I know it has to be done, and I do it out of necessity, but... Uh, and I try. I, I, I'm pretty good at staying on top of it, but I loathe it. It's like <laughs> I loathe it. you know how Paul. You know how Paul had the thorn in his side. Laundry's laundry, your dirty thorn? laundry is the thorn in my side. <laughs> Absolutely. But um, dishes, you know, you see dishes and it's kind of like, eh, you know, yeah, and you yeah. wash them. You know, it's no yeah. big deal. But yeah, give me, give me, give me uh, dishes over laundry any day for sure. All right. All right. So number six. Um, for those of y'all that follow us on Facebook. We did a game a couple days ago where we we said you're on a desert island and you get to take three books of the Bible with you. So I'm going to present that question, but I'm going to kind of reverse it. You have to throw away three books of the Bible. You can never have them to read again. What three are you getting rid of? Oh, so there's three books. Of the, I'm on a desert island and three books of the Bible are coming out. Well, I mean, you don't have to necessarily be on a desert island. There's just three books, and they're gone. Oh. You never have them again. Which three are going? Um, if you don't say Leviticus, I'm, I'm going to end the podcast right now. I don't know. I, I think the law. I think having Leviticus and saying the law is important. Oh, uh, uh, for me, uh, but Leviticus just uh, made like I have a hard time with it. It's just it's dry. It's so dry to go. It through. is. Probably, honestly, probably the book of Esther would be one. Esther would go. Because I, I don't I don't really like Esther Esther shows a very good um perspective of the preservation of national Israel. Mm-hmm. But other than that, it's real and, and there was debate at the um at the uh, early church councils whether Esther should have even been in the Bible. Now mm-hmm. it's there and it's canon. I'm not I'm not arguing uh, against the inerrancy of the book of Esther. I'm just saying there's been so much controversy around it because of its its lack of. Uh, it's just a it's a good history book, but mm-hmm. I don't need Esther. So okay. cross so Esther out. Esther's gone. Uh, this one is going to shock a lot of people, uh, and but the next one would probably be the book of James. Okay. Uh, I, I I think that. Uh, uh, for starters, and I know this isn't probably a good uh, uh, reason, but I'm just going to give it. Uh, uh, Luther, Martin Luther, the 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 uh, rep reformer, he was uh, he had issues with uh, the Book of James uh-huh. as far as, but I think that his issues were more had to do with um, his whole thing was justification by faith in Christ alone, and I think that some of the interpretation. That he received from the that he uh, gathered from the book of James was a little like he couldn't make the distinction between works and uh, sola fide Mm -hmm. and but but for me I I like the book of James but Mm -hmm. I don't think that it's really pertinent to because there are other books of the Bible that show you uh, particularly from Paul uh, that show you uh, Christian charity doing mm-hmm. good to others mm-hmm. and james talks about a lot of that but yeah. it's not a book that i spend a lot of time in i'll put okay. it that way yeah uh and for third uh probably i don't know uh i'd probably say judges like the book yeah. of judges i don't even know i've read the book of <laughs> judges but i don't really know much about it other than well samson you've got samson stories and judges so that's yeah. pretty cool but yeah yeah, yeah. 
But but I'd say Ruth, Samson, and probably James would be three books that I would kick out. So yeah. sorry sorry about you and Leviticus, but <laughs> I, I like to hang on to Leviticus. See, I guess I'm a little bit simpler. I'd probably get rid of Leviticus just because I don't like it. And then I'd get rid of Revelation because I don't like it. And then I'd probably just toss out one of the three Synoptic Gospels because there are three of them. That's a good... I didn't think of that. That's a good... I didn't think of that model, the Synoptic. Because, yeah... That can't uh, change but if your you answer to- now. But if you, talk, if you toss out the non-Synoptic uh, Gospel, you'd have to toss out the Gospel of John, which is my favorite Gospel, actually. Oh, I would so. definitely be keeping John. There's That was yeah. one of my Desert Island books. I would take John with me. Yeah, John, John's Gospel is by far my favorite. Yes. But anyways. Hashtag Team John. Yes. All right, what number am I on? Okay, number seven. All right, here. This, seven. Is, a, this is a fun one. Would you rather oh, listen to Oceans or Good Good Father on repeat? Oh, man. The oceans uh, rise. Oh, man, that song. Uh... I'm probably gonna. I'm probably gonna have to go with Good Good Father because it's really repetitive. But Same. And I, I, I do it. like Chris Tomlin, to be honest. I really do like him. Yeah, I can do it, but uh, uh, Oceans comes from Hillsong, and I ain't about that Hillsong no. life. Like so. Chris Tomlin's cool. Like, and I, I yeah. actually like. He's actually a little theologically sound. Yeah. Hillsong is not. No. Um, but like the thing with Good Good Father, I actually think it's a it's a nice song. There's nothing wrong with it. I think it just got overdone. Yeah, it's just, it's the repetitive nature. And the thing the thing with me and, like, the songs like Oceans, I can't ever tell if they're singing to God or their girlfriend. Oh, I know. Like, and, you know, it's, it's a joke, but it's really not. Like, yeah. you read oh, some yeah. of the lyrics and it's like, is this, like, what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but anyways, mm-hmm. yeah, I'd probably say, I'd probably have to go with um, with, with Chris Tomlin and Good Good Father. Go with Tomlin and to, Yeah, if I had to pick one of the two. All right, number eight might sting a little bit. You ready for it? Shoot. <laughs> if you had to get rid of sweet tea or coffee, which is going? Oh. Have you really picked a good one here? <laughs> well, I, I know you I love <laughs> sweet tea, but honestly, we, and, and this is for my southern brothers and sisters that are listening, I love y'all, and I'm a I'm Southern born and bred, but my wife and I have been drinking a little uh, unsweet tea lately to cut Ooh. out the sugar, and I've actually gotten kind of used to it. Oh. So it's probably actually going to be, believe it or not, sweet tea because I love my coffee. Yeah. I have coffee every day. I have I have sweet tea a lot, mm-hmm. and, but we've cut back a lot because I'm doing some. Uh, I'm I've got some personal weight goal. Um, goals that i'm that i'm uh striving for Mm -hmm. so we've cut a lot of sugar out but yeah i love sweet tea don't get me wrong (laughs) i'm sweet tea all the way so you're keeping you're keeping your maxwell house there right i'm i'm definitely keeping the maxwell house and uh uh carlton roach can't have any (laughs) (laughs) just kidding carlton i love you man (laughs) I'll, i'll share my folgers uh. <laughs> I actually don't really drink Folgers or Maxwell House because I I have a French press, so I grind my own beans. So oh, nice! Yeah. That's lovely. I love the French press. Oh, the first yeah, time I ever had it, I was like, "What is this? I must have more." <laughs> I know. But typically, uh, typically, I I don't. I'm not Maxwell House, believe it or not. Like I we lately, I've been getting the McCafe, the McDonald's <laughs> coffee. It's yeah. a little bit stronger. It's got a little bit stronger. You know, it's for, got a little bit more of a punch. For being fast food coffee, it's not bad coffee. It's not. I like McDonald's coffee as far as, you know, if I'm just going through and grabbing something quick, definitely. And it's I a mean, buck. Typically, typically I support our local coffee house. Yeah. But if, I, if I'm going to go through and just grab one real quick, yeah. But we've actually got the McCafe at home. Oh, yeah. They they make the uh, they make the the McCafe can coffee. It's it's not oh, too bad. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So number nine, this one might sting a little bit too. Uh oh. If you could only have the message or word on the street, which would you pick? Ha! <sighs> and this is your only Bible. Quote, so Bible. I can only have either the word on the street translation or uh-huh. the message. 
Yes. I am no fan of Eugene Peterson yeah. whatsoever. So, honestly, I'm probably going to have to go with the um, the word on the street. I've read some of both, and, you know, I, uh, I yeah, I, I can't. The message is pretty, it's pretty bad. Yeah. Like, I don't like the message. Like, some of the stuff in the Psalms is just like, I just want to, like, smack my face. It's so bad. But See, um, I, I got the message as a kid, and so it, it has, like, this weird nostalgia for me. So yeah, I don't hate it. I think as much as most people do, but I don't. To be honest, I don't even have one in my house. I don't read it. And I'm not gonna buy one. But I don't hate it. Yeah, I mean there there are obviously there are probably worse translate or, or transliterations or whatever. Uh, like for instance, well for instance the New World Translation. <gasps> I would rather have the message than the Jehovah's Witness Bible. Yes. I mean obviously. You yeah. know, or the Book of Mormon, but you know, yeah, yeah, I, I have the same sentiment. Uh, uh, now, as far as Peterson, he's got some strange beliefs, but mm -hmm. as far as that that Bible in itself, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna condemn somebody to hell over the message. But there, there are so many better. You know, it's and it, I hate even calling it a translation. It's really just a paraphrase. That's what I just. It's said. his. It's his commentary of. Of what the body, you know, so, but, but yeah, I would, I would probably take the word on the street because yeah. I'm and a gangster. That's, that's I'm a, a thing. Gangster. You're a gangster. Oh, hush. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing though, real quick on that. I don't think there's anything wrong with paraphrases, but they should be understood as such. Understand that it's not a translation. It is a paraphrase and you should read it as such. Like, just like a commentary is not a translation, it's a commentary, and you should read it as such. No doubt. Agreed. All right, so we're number 10. We're, we're ha you're halfway through your torture here. We're halfway through the race. Woo! <laughs> what is your favorite hymn and or worship song? Okay, it, as far as hymns, are we talking... I, I'm going to get Mr. Reformed on you. Are we talking... Can, can we, do we count, can we count the Psalms? Or you mean hymns from the actual hymn book? I mean like a hymn or like a song you would sing in church. Okay, for, for worship service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my favorite hymn is probably, if I had to pick one, it's probably Rock of Ages. Oh, really? Uh, really like rock. It was That was actually uh, one of R.C. Sproul's uh, favorite uh, hymns before oh, okay. he uh, passed. But yeah. always like rock. You know, Rock of Ages, Clef for me, let me have myself. Just the... the, the the beauty and richness of the the writer's desperation to, to just like be completely in Christ. Yeah. Like, you know, like that no part of him would show and like just let me hide like, you know, let me hide in you and, yeah. and that's that that doesn't mean obviously we know that that doesn't mean like literally hide inside. It's it's an allegory of like let my life it's like it's like uh, uh, the author of scripture said when he said uh, he must increase and I must decrease. It was uh, yes. John the Baptist. Yes. Uh, he must increase and I must decrease. And that song kind of, I think that hymn captures the essence of that that yes. passage. Like, let him, let me run to him and hide my burdens and my shame, my life in, in him. But yeah. yeah, Rock of Ages for him. And, and as far as just like a worship song too, is that what you... Uh, as far as just a regular, uh, well, regular is probably not a, um, I know what you mean. I think people know what you mean. This is super cheesy, and I'm, I might catch flack from, from some of the, like, listeners that don't like, like, cheesier type uh, songs, but probably 10,000 Reasons. I like uh, that one. I think that's a, isn't that Matt Redman that wrote that? It's one of yeah. the Matts, because there's Matt uh, uh, Marr and Matt Redman, and there's another Matt. I always get I that mixed up. That one is, I think that one's Matt Redman. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I like uh, that one. Uh, that's a good, it's just, just if you go down through and read, you know, just read, and it's a little cheesy, I under, it's it's a little cheesy, but. I but, like uh, it. Uh, in my church, we pre we predominantly sing hymns, mm -hmm. but we do some, we do some, we have, uh, we have one, um, uh, uh, contemporary, more contemporary style service a month, mm -hmm. and that's one of the that's one of the songs. The one of the uh, 
uh, uh, worship songs that we'll do is 10,000 Reasons, mm -hmm. among some other ones. But I don't know. I, yeah, I, I like the lyrics to that song. It's it's uh it's it's pretty it's really gospel centered and and mm -hmm. you know it's it's got some good lyrics so yeah definitely those two i like it all right so number number 11 since since you're southern and southerners love to say that no american knows how to cook besides a southerner <laughs> <laughs> it's true oh did you hush now you come up here let, let me cook you a meal son <laughs> Son, yeah, you gotta put the sun behind it. <laughs> like, boy. Okay, anyway, what's the best thing you've ever had to eat? Uh, can be any any dish from any. Okay, uh, I love my I love my wife with all my heart, and she can cook. But mm -hmm. uh, my grandmother's makes the best chicken and dumplings that anybody will ever eat anywhere on the planet. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you guys have chicken and dumplings in Pennsylvania or not, but... Mm, my grandma uh, makes that, them. Uh, really? Okay, mm -hmm. well, yeah, I, I kind of forget, you know, Pennsylvania Quakers, you guys probably are, you know, used to that, that farm ranch style kind of... Just call me a Quaker. Food. Oh, my God. You know, I have a friend that thinks I'm Amish. Now, you're sitting here calling no, me no, no, a no, Quaker. No, 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 I said Quaker. I said mm -hmm. the Quaker land is up there. I don't hey, live I on love a farm. I love your I love your oatmeal. I don't make oatmeal. <laughs> you don't make Quaker oats? I You're do make oatmeal. You're in the oh back room God. somewhere. I Stir make oatmeal, up. but I don't live on a farm where we produce oats. Come get your oatmeal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. No, my grandmother's chicken and dumplings. Uh, uh, well, if for your for your uh, non-Southern listening audience, chicken and dumplings is <laughs> I, I tend to drop the it's dumplings down here. Dumplings, Lynn, dumplings. Uh, but no, it's a, for some of those. It says you may have some people that don't know what that is, but it's just a it's a dish that you you basically take and cook a you you stew chicken in its own broth, mm -hmm. and you pick it off the bone and you mm -hmm. cook it with you make a roux with flour and uh, butter. You. Uh, and butter, right? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I know. I know. I'm just kind of going through it in my head. I'm not trying to give a cooking lesson, but and then you you uh, you you roll out you roll out flour. You make essentially you make biscuit type dough, and you roll your flour out and cut it in strips, and you drop it in this simmering liquid of of chicken. And some people use carrots in theirs. Uh, like, and it's uh, kind of like chicken noodle soup, but with dumplings not noodles yeah it's a it's a it's a it's kind of a well some people like it a little bit thicker and some people make it thinner yeah i mean it's more, more of like a, a stew the way i've had it yeah it would i would classify it as more like a stew mm -hmm. uh exactly. and, and her fried chicken's really good too i love love fried chicken all the fried chicken because you're southern yes. you have to <laughs> got to if, if you from the south you gotta eat fried chicken so grandma's just, chicken and dumplings final answer that's my final answer, though. Right. They're the best. <laughs> Sounds awesome. Now I'm now I'm hungry. <laughs> right. Like I'm gonna call up my grandma and be like, "Grandma, can you make me some dinner?" <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm hungry. Feed me. She's gonna cook you some of those good old Quaker oats. I bet you. Oh, you hush on. Listen, no. Okay, no. We need to get back on that. I live in Pittsburgh. <laughs> I'm nowhere near a farm. Although. So you I'm live in the city in Pittsburgh, in other words. No, actually, well, technically, we're on the outskirts, but, oh, my phone just went off. Oops. Anyway, okay, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> All right, what number are we on? Okay, what we did number 11, best thing you've had to eat. Okay, well, th this, is, this is a thinker, John. Okay, you ready okay. for this? Sure. Number 12, what is the biggest threat to the American Christian Church? Ooh, that is a good one. Mm-hmm. See, I told you some of um, these questions were more serious. I honestly, uh, just from from my experiences with people, I think the biggest the biggest threat to the Christian Church on a grand scale is, uh, for me, I would say secular uh, uh, secular education and secular. Um, uh, academic uh uh academy type 
uh, co- collegiate. What's how am I trying to say this? Secular education as a whole. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, we 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 allow we allow the government through. And and before I start this, I'm not. I'm not completely opposed to public education. Uh, I make some distinctions, but I do have a problem with what public education has become, mm-hmm. uh, not only at the uh, lower education levels, but also at the um, collegiate, the, the, the public universities. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're teaching people, people are being taught uh, what to think and not how to think. Mm-hmm. They're taught systems that uh, through things like uh, uh, naturalistic Darwinian evolution, Mm -hmm. they're taught that that's a fact and it's not still a theory. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 50, 60, 70 years ago, it was still being taught as theory. But Mm -hmm. because of postmodernism, we're raising generations of uh, American uh, uh, children and, and, and people that are, that are being taught, what to think and not how to think for themselves and Mm -hmm. it's not that it's not that uh you know the the biblical worldview needs to be guarded and Mm -hmm. if we allow the world to keep pushing and forcing their way into uh uh, our education system uh it's it's gonna continue as it already has as we can see just you know get on social media or turn on the you know turn on the news network or you can see it's having an effect with with uh the way that people are are um handling weapons with the way that people are uh, uh atheism's on the rise mm-hmm. uh secularism's on the rise and it's because our our uh education system is typically um uh, from the public standpoint is uh, government ran and operated, and mm-hmm. the government is essentially our children's parents. Mm-hmm. They get them. If your kids go to public school, they get them eight hours a day, five days a week. I mm-hmm. mean, and they get to tell them what to think, how to think. Uh, I think I, I'm I'm uh, I push for a more of a return to homeschooling or private Christian schooling. Mm-hmm. I think that Christians need to start doing that, not for the sake of. Uh, uh, pulling out of culture. I'm not saying we should pull out of culture, pull away from, uh, uh, um, you know, we live in the world. Mm -hmm. We can live in the world without being of the world. So Mm -hmm. uh, keep continuing to to teach our children the biblical worldview. And, um, and so, yeah, that's, I think that, that our, that public education is the biggest threat, threat to the church because, you're going to have a new wave of people coming into the church because uh, these these people are going they're they're coming out a lot of them are coming out and going to church mm-hmm. but they're you know they're they they got female they're becoming female pastors they're mm-hmm. becoming you know gay gay and lesbian pastors mm-hmm. they're you know and that I think is the biggest threat to the to the church and the Bible is secular uh, education. I wouldn't necessarily disagree, but I think what's a bigger threat, in in my opinion, is when we allow secular ideologies to work their way into our theology. And like you said, we don't guard a biblical worldview. Um, When we start getting really laxed on things, like you said, even things like female pastors, like how many people dig their heels in and say, well, no, women can preach. And we're like, no, scripture says no. Um, Mm. But it, it goes against the grain of the culture, so... We reject the idea that there is a a limitation on what women can do in the church. And I'm like, well, who are you going to listen to, God or your secular worldview? And that's a problem for me. Yeah, no, that's a good point. I'm glad you mentioned that. That's 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 a good way to look at it. Yeah, it's 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 like I said, we can be in the world and not be of the world. We have to we've got to engage culture. And and that's the only way that we're going to see. Uh, uh, we have to educate ourselves through yes. the lens of scripture. That's right. Mm-hmm. All right. So that that was. I think that was probably the the thickest question. <laughs> on no, the that's list. a good. Yeah, that was a really good question. I'm glad I, you asked I, that. One. I had to throw in something kind of edifying, you know. <laughs> no doubt about it. All right. So number thirteen. What is one thing that people probably don't know about you? Um. 
I would say that a lot of people, well, my close friends and the people that I associate with on a fa- Facebook on a daily basis would know this, but for lack of your listening audience and their knowledge and some of the other people that may not know, uh, I am actually adopted. Oh, really? Um, my, yes. My, uh, my mother had me at a very young age, hmm. and uh, she met my adoptive father uh, when I was around four years old, and they met and they got married. Um, and, uh, he's been my dad ever since. So yeah, I, I was adopted. Uh, he's my adoptive, uh, father. Uh, my, actually my father, uh, uh I never knew him, my, my biological father. So hmm. that's one thing about me that some of you guys may not know. So I'm all for adoption. Yeah. We plan on maybe doing it ourselves. My wife and I. Adopting oh, nice. Kid. Yep. My, my husband has a similar situation, and that's just, well, it's kind of different because his dad just, like, had no interest, like, just dipped out. And right. And it's just, it's so weird. Like, I think I make a bigger deal out of it than he does because to me, I'm like, it's so weird that I have a father-in-law that I have never met. My girls have a granddad that they've never met. I'm like, that's just so weird. It's one thing when it's adoption and it was purposeful. It's different when, like, you had a kid, you were there for a while, and then you're like, eh, I'm done with this, and you just leave. It's funny you'd say that. You, your, your your husband and I might have, might would have some stuff to talk about because some I of the am. things that you mentioned kind of hit home with me. There's some, there's some situations. I won't get into detail on the, the cast, but uh, yeah. uh, there's some things with, with him there that, yeah, I, I can definitely – relate to some of the things you just said, believe it or not. And for the record, I'm not trying... Like, anyone who puts up their child for adoption for, for whatever reason, I'm not trying to sit here and say, like, you're a piece of crap. That's not what I meant at all by that. Um, right. But my husband's dad, he has several children that he walked out on, like, promised these women the world, and then, see ya! He actually adopted a child with his last wife, and then, again, dipped out. And adoption's wow. expensive, yeah. So, there's a difference between making what you feel is the best choice for your child and just being a piece of poo. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can completely, I can completely agree and attest to that. Yes. So, I just, I wanted to be clear on that. I'm not knocking adoption at all. I'm very pro adoption, and I think for a lot of people, that's the best thing for them. So. I wanted to be clear on that. If you have, if you are adopted, or if you put a child up for adoption, I'm not putting you down here. No, and I and I concur to that. Everything that she just said. Yes. All right. So what number? I keep losing track here. Thirteen, fourteen. Uh, fourteen. Yes. What is your biggest fear? Mine spiders. I hate them. I'm super. I'm super claustrophobic. I hate being in like crowded spaces. Yeah, and and spiders definitely. I hate I hate spiders. Ooh, no. I'll kiss a snake on the mouth. Snakes don't bother me at all. No, I snakes. Call snakes but, well, but. <laughs> I just said that I wasn't like a farm girl, but my <laughs> I used to catch snakes in my pap's yard <laughs> when I was ah, kid. that's awesome. I'd find these little like gardener snakes and I'd play with them, and my mamma would yell at me, but. Yeah, I don't have an issue with snakes, but man, I, it can be a spider like the size of like a dot, and I will freak out. Okay. So you say, wait, you say memo too? Yeah, we've been over this, Watson. Well, I, I, for, I completely forgot about that, Because Kristen, I'm sorry. Remember, yeah, that's, that's definitely a, that's a huge southern, like everything down here is memo and papa. Well, that's, for you, so those of you that don't understand, that's grandmother and grandfather. Yes. In a more southerny, slangy kind of. That's we, the way. We had this conversation already because my mamaw actually passed away a few months ago, and you, right. you brought that up. You're like, you say mamaw? I was like, yep. I totally let that slip my mind. Forgive me. You are absolutely right. We did have that conversation. Yes. But I, I called my grandfather Papap, not Papa. It was Papap. Papap. Yeah. I like that. I like yes. that. That's cool. Yes. Um. Okay. So claustrophobia yeah i'm, I'm with you yeah. there I, I hate confined spaces i don't like to fly for that reason 
like being trapped in the plane, I'm like, mm mm, nope, no thank you. Yeah, and it's funny you say that because I actually am getting ready to fly this summer to Peru for a mission trip. And I'm oh. like, yeah, this is going to take some like prayer and, you know, because <laughs> I'm not a plane kind of guy. <laughs> like, share, type amen. <laughs> yes. Amen. <laughs> Nobody gets that, John. Nobody's going to get that but Except us. Carlton. A- 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 Carlton will get it. <laughs> Trevin will get it. <laughs> I don't think Trevin listens to my podcast. I got to get that guy to listen. Trevin, Trevin's a funny guy. I like I told Trevin. Him, I told him he should be on here for a, uh, he should do a political, he should do a Romans 13 podcast. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I got to, for those of you listening, Trevin's just a mutual friend of ours who is very, very, very libertarian. Uh, kind of an anarchist a little bit. <laughs> he can be, but but he's got a he's got a good view on some things. But theologically, the kid is sound, so I'll give him that. No doubt about yes. it. No doubt about it. Agreed. So we we might have to get him on here. Uh, you 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 and Trevin, you you boys can talk it out. I'll stay out of that one. Yeah, I'm a, he'd be he'd be somebody I'd put on my short list to have on the podcast. Yes, but anyway, uh, number fifteen. Because we're, we're getting close to an hour here, Watson. We sure are. Wow, time flies. Because we're chatty. We're chatty people. <laughs> yes, agreed. That's all good. Um, okay, this is a fun one. Would you rather listen to a Joel Osteen or a Benny Hinn sermon? Ooh. Well, the thing is with Joel is I'm probably going to feel good about myself. But Benny will entertain listening. you. Yeah, but Benny is entertaining because yes. they got the whole, what's that, uh, there's a YouTube video with, like, Benny Hinn, but he's got, it looks like he's, like, throwing, like, a, like, like it's fire like Star Wars. Yeah, it looks yeah. It looks like he's, it looks like he's got a lightsaber, <laughs> and he's, like, knocking people down with a lightsaber. Yes. And at the end, he throws his hands out, and he's shooting lightning like the Emperor. <laughs> it's really, really cool. But anyways, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I, that's, I'd probably have to go... If we're going, like, just listening to a sermon, I'd probably go with Joel just because he's like, like, Joel Osteen is an excellent motivational speaker. He is. But he's a terrible theologian. He's got like, good his teeth. his theology's trash. But he he's really, like, he could really, if he would just drop Jesus and be like Tony Robbins and just do <laughs> motivational speaking, dude, I'd pay a hundred bucks just to go hear his seminar. Like, really, I would. But... It's just, but but if I'm going like just to see a, a like a preaching meeting, it'd yeah. be Benny Hinn. But but yeah. to, to hear somebody preach, I'd have to go with Joel, just because of his motivation. <laughs> but we don't we don't want Joel to drop Jesus. We want him to turn to Jesus. Yes, Amen. Want him to repent. Yes, and, that's his false and, gospel. Yes, because prosperity gospel is not the gospel as we've said. Yes. So yes, we are Joel. If you're listening, because I'm sure you got nothing better to do than listen to a podcast with four followers. Repent, son. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness, I I got um on iTunes. It shows like podcasts that are similar to ours, and it showed the Joel Osteen podcast is similar to ours. I'm like, I I don't feel safe right now. Yeah, no, that's yeah. I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> Because I'm like, no, it's not. Lord, help me. Yeah, I need a Medea on that one. Peace be still. Yeah, well, I mean, for those of y'all listening, if you haven't picked up on this yet, both, uh, uh, what's your name? John, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I'm John, the guy that's already done two podcasts with you. (laughs) Both John and I are five-point Calvinists, so we're, like, as far from prosperity preacher (laughs) as you can get. Yeah. Definitely, we're uh, we're on we're on the opposite end. If yes. if it was a, a proverbial line, we would be on the other end of the line. Yes, 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 yes. All right. So number sixteen. What is the best Christian movie you've ever seen? Because most of them are kind of terrible. The best Christian movie that I've seen. Do doc do documentaries count? Sure. Uh, I would probably go with Collision. It's a movie called Collision. All right. It is a documentary of a series of debates between the famous atheist who's passed away. I pray that he repented before he passed. Mm. Uh, Christopher Hitchens. And he did a series of debates in a book 
with a reform pastor uh, named Doug Wilson, Douglas Wilson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, some of the listeners will recognize, but they did a they did a documentary where they did a series of debates, and Christopher was fascinated, and he said that he said in the movie that Doug Wilson was one of the best Christian, the most consistent Christian debaters, and honest, genuinely, you know, kindest Christian person that he'd ever personally met. So I always pray that at some point in that um, dialogue that 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 Doug led him to Christ. Yes, uh, amen. But but Collision, if you if you haven't seen it, check it out. You can watch it. It's on. I think the full movie you can watch on YouTube. Just type in Collision, Doug Wilson, Christopher Hitchens. Uh, yeah. You can usually catch it, but it's a really good movie. No, no doubt to check that out. I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe that Doug Wilson is the father of Rebecca Merkel, who wrote a book called Even Exile, which is really awesome. To the ladies listening, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. It's really good stuff. I didn't know that. That's good. Rebecca Merkel? Yes. I'm pretty sure she's the daughter of Doug Wilson. Um, I could be wrong. I'll have to look that up on on the Google later, but I'm I'm like 99% sure. Sounds good. Uh, my favorite Christian movie. Um, can I can I say Madame Blueberry? You know the the Veggie Tales movie. That's my- <laughs> <laughs> I like the Veggie Tales. That's that's good. my that's favorite of the Veggie me. Tales. And I then like- they they like got. I think they got new directors or, or new creators, and they mm-hmm. say that it's not as good as it used to be. It's I don't not, know. It's not, yeah, it's not the same. Anyway, speaking of Veggie Tales, because uh, that's one of my guilty pleasures. Number seventeen. Do you have any guilty pleasures? Mine's Veggie Tales. Uh, v- guilty pleasures. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. Honestly, yes, I like really good cigars. Believe it or not, I'm. Okay. I like. I like I don't smoke cigars all the time, but I really like a good cigar. And on the weekend, a lot of times I'll try to have uh, a pretty good cigar. But uh, yes, I like I like tobacco, and mm-hmm. I like I like smoking cigars. Nice. <laughs> all right, number eighteen. Uh, whether from the past or the present, who is your favorite theologian? I could go cliche and say John Calvin, but I'm not going to. He's probably the most influential. That'd be a better question for that. But uh, my favorite theologian past, is it past, present, or future, or and? Past or present. How would you name a future theologian? Wait, did I just say future? Yeah, you did. I, that was so bad. <laughs> yeah, future future theologian, me, 30 years from now. No, <laughs> uh, uh, past or present? Yeah. So pick one or the okay. Uh, I'm gonna go past and uh, probably I read a lot of a particular reformed. Uh, uh, he was a reformed uh, minister at one of the West. I think Westminster East, which is a seminary. It's a reformed seminary. Mm-hmm. Uh, guy by the name of John Murray. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's written books on baptism. He's got commentaries. Some of the audience will recognize him, but uh, John Murray is uh, writing his books have been very influential uh, on me, particularly in the last couple of years, for sure. Mm. Uh, I've been reading him a lot, uh, and outside of him, I'd probably go with John Owen. Mm-hmm. Uh, John Owen uh, wrote Mortification of Sin. These are guys that have been dead, like which. Murray, not so much. He's a, he's a uh, 19th century guy, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, John Owen, he was he's been dead through you know 350 years, mm-hmm. but uh, he was an English Puritan. Uh, present, I love Vodie Bauckham. Yes, big Vodie Bauckham fan. I love him. <clears throat> he's great. Yes. Paul David Tripp. I don't know if you're familiar with Paul David Tripp. Mm-mm. Got a must got a mustache, really good. <laughs> uh, but oh, he's yes. got a really the nice dude with mustache. the mustache. He's got a really good mustache. Like he would not look right without a mustache. He it just it just works for him. 
Well, uh, and uh, everyone knows that you cannot be reformed if you don't have facial hair. That's you got just... to have a yes. I'm still working on mine, but it's not coming in well. Is it not? No. You, you just get you some uh, some of those supplements to help you grow it out <laughs> good and thick. But th- <laughs> yeah, th- those are <laughs> those are some of the the uh, those are some of the theologians that have been very influential on me. All right, all right, all right. It's so number nineteen. We're almost done. Um, aside from the Bible, obviously, what is your favorite piece of Christian literature? That's an easy one. It has to, without any questions or dispute, be the Institutes of the Christian Religion by Jean Calvin, or Ooh. John Calvin, putting that little French. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, the Institutes by John Calvin, uh, it's his systematic theology. Uh, it shaped uh, Christianity for the course of you know four or five hundred years. Uh, much of what we have today, uh, outside of Luther's Reformation, we have because of Calvin's all of his works, and that's would be his magnum opus. Mm. Would be Institutes. It's just a book. He just goes basically through his systematic view of theology and breaks down everything from baptism, Lord's Supper, uh, the scriptures, uh, 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 the fellowship that we have with with other brothers and sisters, theology of God, what we call theology proper. He goes through the Holy Spirit, every Christology, uh, and it's just a big, thick book full of his thoughts and his uh, interpretations and his exegesis of uh, the scriptural, uh, the scriptural truths. So yeah, definitely the institutes. Nice. All right. So final question, <clears throat> and I think this will tell everybody everything they need to know about you. Number twenty, does pineapple go on pizza? <laughs> <laughs> I am of the pro. Pineapple pizza camp. I love pineapple on my pizza. I'm a Hawaii. I'm so a gross. pineapple so Canadian gross. bacon. Uh, we're just gonna have to. We're gonna have to agree. Yeah, and 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 my wife, she's she's not pineapple on pizza. So. Like honest to Pete, the idea of biting into hot pineapple. Like oh my god. Like even thinking about, it, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> it, it, but it's it's like it's almost like. Do you not when you bake your like holiday ham? Do you not put, do you not put the pineapple with it sometimes? I do put the pineapple on it, and I don't eat it. Oh, so it's just for flavor. Because I was gonna say, if you put the, if you get the ham, the Canadian bacon, it's hot. The pineapple, it's like it's almost like eating a holiday ham pizza, and mm-hmm. I like that. <clears throat> I don't know. It's just something about that sweet and salty. It just well, it works for me. <laughs> here's the thing: when I I cook for most of the holidays, I make a ham. I don't eat the ham either. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just like, here, here's this thing I cooked. Everybody, dig in. It it may be terrible. It may not even be done. I know how you to cook find it. Out. <laughs> I taste it to make sure it's right, but I don't eat it at dinner. I don't really care for ham. I'm not a huge huge ham person. But I do like ham and uh, uh, pineapple pizza. Yeah, now it's not nice. my favorite. Let's 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 <laughs> dial it back a minute. It's not my all time favorite pizza. Okay. I'm a mushroom and pepperoni kind of guy. What is wrong with you? You don't like mushrooms either. <laughs> there, it's fungus. Yeah. It's disgusting. And? Oh my goodness! I think. We had this conversation on a Facebook post one time about you and mushrooms. Now that I think about it, I know, love all the mushrooms. Do you know how mushrooms grow? Do you know? Do you know? I, yeah, I do. They, yeah, they're they're, a, they're they're literally a fungus. I get it. They're they grow spore. them in poop, John. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No doubt. But this is coming from someone that lives in an area of the country that eats squirrels. So. If I'll eat a squirrel, I'll pretty much eat a fungus. Never had squirrel. Because in the south, in the south, we eat it, we'll eat anything that won't eat us. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm gonna pray for you. 
You should. I need it a lot. Well, obviously, look at your dietary choices. <laughs> Make it right with the Lord. <laughs> oh my Make God. it right. <laughs> Turn or burn. <laughs> like, share, type, amen. <laughs> Sad like, it's A-N-E-M. A-N-E-M. Hashtag like A-N-E-M. A-N-E-M. Like, one like equal one, one no pineapple. <laughs> oh, my God. See, the thing is with the pineapple, I know I'm in the minority, and it, it's so sad. I don't know. I think, I would think that the, the pro pineapple is, I would think the pro pineapple would be the minority. No. I think the anti pineapple, I mean, could be wrong, but I always thought the anti pineapple was the bigger camp, but I don't, I don't know. So. I don't think so. Maybe not. We'll have to do a poll one day. I have, and my camp always loses. I've created <laughs> polls. <laughs> well, then, there you go. Oh, my Maybe goodness. I'll do a poll on uh, 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 on my other page. We'll see yeah, what yeah. they think. You, you do that. You let, let me know. I'll be waiting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Now, you know what? We're going to get responses like the girls over at Sheologians get. Yeah, I'll just sit there and giggle too much. That's the complaint the girls at Sheologians get. Oh, yeah. Which, all the time. For those of y'all listening, if you don't know what Sheologians is, um, it's a it's another podcast run by Summer Yeager and Joy Temby. Uh, Summer Yeager is the daughter of Dr. James White. And they sit down, they talk about theology and shenanigans, and it's awesome. But people complain that they giggle too much. I'm like... The funny thing and is, when they laugh, I usually laugh with them, because I think they're funny. I do, too. And here's the thing. Who doesn't want to listen to the uh, daughter of the old sage bearded legend that is James White? That's like, right. Give me a break. But, she's, but no, I'm not going to to piggyback her on her dad. Like She's great on her own. Oh, uh, yeah. Summer's yeah. fantastic, smart, understands scripture. Uh, uh, and, and I'm going to tell you guys, it isn't just for the ladies. Like that podcast is, is good for anybody. They, they do a lot more geared toward the ladies. Mm -hmm. I would say they did a whole four part series on feminism. They talked about the first, second and third wave of feminism. And then they did a fourth addressing intersectional feminism. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, I think that guys should be on the up and up with feminism because like, it's it's a big thing in our it's culture. It's becoming a big deal. Po- postmodern feminism is becoming the norm. Uh, yeah, third wave and intersectional feminism are absolute poison. Hashtag yes. change my mind. Change my mind. Yep, absolutely. Um, but anyway, yeah, we sat here and laughed. And if people are annoyed, then you know what? I've got the joy of the Lord, okay? <laughs> and and we're going to do some, some good some some uh good content we got some good stuff coming for you guys we're gonna yes. we're gonna do uh, uh some podcasts together some podcasts on our own and yes and we're we're excited I, I personally am excited to get to know uh the listening audience so yes yes um oh what was i gonna say so yeah um john is on full time he's half of this team so welcome to Christians in Motion, the best Christian podcast ever. <laughs> yes, indeed. You're joining a good team. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. So, hey, if you're listening, um, just know that um, if you follow us like on Facebook or if you read our blogs, you'll always know if you're getting me or John. We'll be signing our stuff. So it shouldn't be too confusing for y'all. And hopefully you can tell the differences between our voices. Hopefully. <laughs> Yeah, it could be. It could. I'm sure it could be confusing sometimes. Yes, but hey, my husband just came home, and we're about ready to wrap up anyway. Sounds like a plan. I've enjoyed it, Chris. Yeah. Well, thanks for thanks for being here, and uh, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, I, I'm 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 happy to be here. All right. Well, I think that's all we have for this episode because we've rambled on for over an hour. <laughs> All right, well, thank you, John, once again. And, uh, yeah, look forward to more content from the pineapple-loving heretic, John Watson. Yeah, buddy. (laughs) It's it's all gravy. Oh, you're so southern. (laughs) All right, I'm going to end this podcast before we go another hour. 
Right. All right. That's it. The fucking game, bro. <laughs> Done messed up, a Elon. <laughs> <laughs>